I can't decide whether or not this is the least necessary video I've ever had to respond to, or the most necessary video I've ever had to respond to. On the one hand, this content is so unambiguously horrific it should go without saying, and thus I don't need to say anything. But on the other hand, it exists, so clearly it wasn't unambiguous enough. But regardless of the necessity, when I hear this... Hello, my young comrades! Hi! I'm going to respond to that. I'm going to show a picture. This is my way of figuring out if you've been tainted by the patriarchy. Patriarchy? Based on everything I've read and heard from feminists, patriarchy is a problem because it is a hierarchy that unequally benefits men at the expense of women. In feminism, and in communism, comrade, the guiding principle is ostensibly equality. So if you're trying to determine whether or not these children are tainted, what would you look for? If you are an intersectional feminist and you are being consistent in the application of your values, you should find it problematic if these children indicate an unequal preference towards someone based on, for example, race or gender. What? Oh, oh, I knew that. Who do you think it is? This looks creepy. It looks creepy. <laughs> Why? Those children don't know who that is, and by extension, they don't know what he's done or what he hasn't done, and have no opinion on that. All they have to go by to inform their opinion about him is what he looks like. There's just like this thing about white people that just makes me feel like... <laughs> You're, like does he look like a good stop. guy or a bad guy? Bad guy. Bad guy. <laughs> You are encouraging children to hold a negative opinion of a person based solely on their outward appearance, that being of a white male. This is either not what you intended, and you should then discourage the children from holding this opinion, or it is what you intended, and you should drop the pretense of equality. Hatred or prejudice on the basis of race or gender is something you are opposed to when it's done by other people to you, but something you are in favor of when it's done by you to other people. There's a word for that, and it's hypocrisy. After thinking about it for a second, I actually think that hypocrisy better describes the foundational value of feminism and communism than equality does. What do we know about him? <laughs> what do we know about him? He's bad. He's Unfortunately, bad. the president. Yeah. I want to fire him. These children have no opinion about Trump beyond orange man bad. And it's okay for the children to have that opinion because they're children. I don't expect them to have good reasons to hold the opinions that they do. However, if you are going to encourage children to hold certain opinions, as you are, I would expect you to inform the children as to why they should hold such opinions. That's how you build a useful working framework for the children to apply elsewhere. I want to build a wall! How do we feel about this wall? It is b blocking opportunity for people that don't live in America to come here for a better opportunity. She didn't think of that herself, so I'm going to assume that that is the reason given for why Orange Man Bad. The purpose of a border wall is to reduce illegal immigration, not immigration as a whole. Regardless of whether you think such a wall would be practical or effective to that end, that is the goal. That's the same goal that any border has. So if you have that criticism against the wall, that's your criticism against borders as well. You are in favor of open borders. Ignoring both the obvious security risk that poses, and any complications that might arise from cultures clashing on such a scale, unlimited immigration into a democracy with a welfare system that operates at a deficit is not good for that country. That does not primarily serve the economic interests of the people who are already living here. And I grant that illegal immigration is the pragmatic option for many people who want to be here. However, if their immigration is posing a cost to me, 
Why is it fair to say that I am denying them opportunity by keeping them out, but not fair to say that they are taking opportunity from me by coming in? Why is that problem of lesser consideration? Well, the answer is obvious. We're talking to feminists. They don't give a fuck about the economy. They care that the U.S. is a white country and we're keeping out the brown people. And that's racist. And, and uh, we all came at some point from some other place. My dad came here and my mom came here too. They came here from where? Cambodia. Oh, wow. What do you think they think that they came from all the way to Cambodia and this is what they get to look at on the TV screen all the time? <laughs> Did they come here legally? Because a lot of legal immigrants don't like illegal immigrants. Which makes sense from the perspective of a legal immigrant, because illegal immigration makes it harder to legally immigrate. Hello Kitty! It is Hello Kitty. What is she missing? Where's, where's her mouth? No, her don't. mouth? Why doesn't she have a mouth? Because simplicity is associated with cuteness, and you can make something more simple by leaving out extraneous details? The people who created her didn't want Asian girls um, to speak up about their, who they are. Yeah, to speak up about who they are. Very profound. Very profound. In a sense, it is very profound. But in another, more accurate sense, it's retarded. For one, she's not a mute character. She speaks in the show. That is primarily what the show is about, is her interactions with other characters and her talking. But also... This is Coco Cat, created by the same people who created Hello Kitty and is Hello Kitty's male counterpart. He also doesn't have a mouth. This information was so trivially easy to find, you either did no research, and your worldview led you to a false conclusion, or you did research, and your worldview encourages you to lie in order to push your ideology. What oh. is this? Oh, oh. Misogyny. misogyny. So misogyny is uh, is the hatred of women. <gasps> is that is that a weird? That's yeah. very weird. <gasps> hatred of women? But I'm women. How could anyone hate me? It's not like I've done anything wrong, like those creepy white men. There's just like this thing about white people that just makes me feel like, <laughs> You're... like it's fair to hate your mother or your sister or something like that. You don't know my mother, you don't know my sister, so you have no idea whether or not it's fair for me to hate them. The only way you could think it unfair for me to hate them and also not know them is if you thought it were unfair for me to hate any women. And I understand how the child got to that conclusion because the definition of misogyny presented to them was hatred of women and not hatred of women because they are women. Based on the definition you gave them, they're going to think that anyone who ever hates them is by definition a misogynist. And that is perfectly in line with the philosophy I've come to expect from feminism. This is how it starts. Gender non-binary. Fucking nope. I'm out. I'm not doing this. You can't make me. I'm out of here. Goodbye. All right, what does this mean? You're gender fluid. You're gender fluid, wow. Firstly, gender non-binary and gender fluid are not the same thing. Secondly, there's no such thing as gender non-binary. And thirdly, who told the child what gender fluid was? What does gender fluid mean? Like you can be any, like any gender you want to be. You're not a boy or like you're not just a boy and uh, just a girl. Yeah. Does anybody know anyone who's gender non-binary? L? I am gender. Fluid? You're gender fluid. Yeah. That's, that's a wonderful thing. You're not gender fluid, you're a child. You have a solid gender and your gender is idiot. Thank you for sharing that. So when people talk about genders only being two things, you go, no, there's actually gender non-binary. It's a thing. It's a thing. A person's sex refers to the role they play in sexual reproduction. In humans, we have two mutually exclusive roles, so we have two sexes. Based on what progressivity types tell me about gender, gender is the societal role associated with a particular sex. If there are fewer than two genders, we would all either have the same gender or not have a gender, and thus the concept of gender could be tossed out because it doesn't describe anything. 
If there are more than two genders, then some of those genders would not be associated exclusively with a particular sex, and thus would also not meaningfully describe anything. There are either two genders, or gender does not describe the societal role associated with sex. You can redefine gender however you'd like, but that definition requires that there be two. What is this word? I think it's like when you're hurting someone. Does this video count as oppression? Because I'm in a lot of pain right now. This is maybe the most hidden kind of racism that there is. That should be the easiest kind of racism to find, because if it is structural, you could find it by examining the structure. That is explicitly not how feminists came to the conclusion that there is structural racism. Feminists determine that a structure is racist by examining the results of the structure, and not the structure itself. This leads to absurdity like murder laws are racist because they disproportionately affect black people who commit more murders. If structural racism exists, you should be able to identify it by pointing to the law that treats people differently based on race. Holy shit, we're only a third of the way through this. Hello, kids! Hi! Hi. What fresh hell have I just walked into? Oh. Your English is really good! Foreign immigrant, Wing Wong! Oh. Oh. Donnie clearly cannot see me as anything but as a foreigner, even though I have lived in America my whole life! This is a case of structural racism. Unless you're implying he's using his power as president to use the state to discriminate against you, that is not an example of structural racism. That is, at best, an example of personal racism. Why are you whining? Everyone knows you Asians are naturally good at math and getting into good colleges. Hey, that's the model minority myth which is a byproduct of racism. I agree that there are no model minorities, but probably for different reasons than you do. Was that comment an example of structural racism? Or was it personal racism? Trick question, I identify as black, so nothing I say is racist. You should be studying and be quiet and grateful that I even let you stay in this country. You aren't letting me stay in this country. I belong here as much as your farty butt does. Yeah! Whether or not you've lived here your whole life is somewhat besides the point because, as we established earlier, you are in favor of open borders. You don't just think that you belong here. You think that everyone who wants to be here belongs here. And, as discussed earlier, that is neither fair nor practical. Watch out, Donnie, because once we defeat structural racism, you will actually have to work as hard as we do to get ahead of us. Yeah! If America is a structurally racist country that oppresses minorities to the primary benefit of white men, why do so many immigrants want to come to America? Why do people come here, by the millions, to be oppressed? Are they facing even more oppression in their home countries? If so, be honest with me here, do you think we could accurately describe their home countries as shithole countries? No, of course not. That would also be an example of structural racism. We cannot understand structural racism by just hearing about it. We have to experience it. Fantastic. I will help you experience structural racism in any way I can. So in front of you are four boxes. And this is the game. When I say go, all of you will stand up. You will pick up a box. And if you can open it within 15 seconds, you get to keep what's inside. <laughs> How funny would it be if one of the boxes contained deportation letters? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, maybe I am racist. Three! No running, no running. This is not a Black Friday stampede. The colors, it's based on what the colors are. It's a 75% of a cookie. Alyssa, will you read yours first? 
Hispanic, Hispanic women earn 55% of what white men earn. Then they should do more work to earn more money. Or are you implying that they are paid less money for the same amount of work? Well, then they should sue, because that's illegal. This is either not an issue, or the mechanism for solving the issue is already in place. What do you got, L? Black women earn 60% of what white women men earn. That's definitely not fair. I know. But Wow, look at this racist system that unfairly benefits black women over Hispanic women. That's your point, right? Because black women earn more than Hispanic women, ergo it must be the case that the system is set up to benefit them more? Yes? No? White women earn 75% of what white men earn. Do you feel it? Because something magical is about to happen. Asian women earn 84% of what white men earn. So Asian women earn more than white women in this structurally racist country you've been going on about. So you're left with two options. Are you going to say that the country is not structurally racist? Or are you going to say that it's structurally racist in favor of Asians? Why don't you have a full cookie? Why doesn't anyone have a whole cookie? Because white men always earn more than women. Are you brave enough to bring up Asian men? Why do they get to earn more? Because for a really long time, men have always been more powerful. But are men really actually more powerful? No. No. Mm, they Why just not? act like it. Two things. One, not brave enough to bring up Asian men. Didn't do it. Asian men would be making more than one cookie's worth of income. Why? Either the Asian men, like the white men, have historically had that kind of power, or the fact that white men historically had that kind of power did not effectively mitigate an Asian's ability to succeed. In which case, why did structural racism fail to keep Asians down, but not fail to keep blacks and Hispanics down? And two... If men aren't more powerful than women, how did they set up the structure to unequally benefit them? Here's an unpleasant reality check. If you were unable to stop us from setting up the structure that way, you are weaker. We are more effective at actualizing our goals than you. You are weaker than us. Unfortunately for us white men, that's not the case. Because the structure isn't set up in a way specifically to benefit us. By all accounts, the structure is set up specifically to benefit you. To benefit women. And men set it up that way because women wanted us to set it up that way. Because men tend to do things that women want. That's why we have more women's shelters. That's why women are prioritized when it comes to divorce and custody. And why if a man is being beaten by his wife, the police remove the man. Women have the structural power. And you can observe that by looking at the structure. They tend to earn less not because they are less capable, but because they tend to have different priorities. Are you looking for this? Oh, looks like Donnie got a full cookie. Because he's a white man. And Jackie Chan got more than one cookie. Does your following logic hold up for Jackie? Just because my father gave me this cookie doesn't mean I didn't earn it. We oh, went up there, got the box, in 15 seconds! You got a pretty big cookie, though, so why can't you just be happy with that? I need the whole cookie. It's not fair, and it's structural racism. I agree. Asian men have had it too good for too long, and white men need some of that money. Asian women earn 84% of what white men earn. That's actually more than what was in the other boxes. But do we, are, we, are you okay with it? It's pretty close to 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. 100% is better than 84. I'll take 100 any day. Yeah, and like 115% is like even better than 100%. So I'll take the 115 because like I deserve that because other people have that and I want it. So gimme. 
what is our responsibility to other women of color who are gonna earn less, and white women who earn less? To try to work together to earn the same amount as white men. It's actually getting quite infuriating to see you dance around the topic of Asian men. You're aiming to make as much as white men. Why? Asian men earn more. Acknowledge that Asian men earn more. You acknowledge that you earn more than white women as Asian women. Ah, can you put the dots together? Here at Radical Cram School, we learn about the different identities that we have to navigate every single day. American. What do you think of when you think of the word American? If they don't respond with racist, I'm gonna say you're a lousy teacher because you've been teaching them America is racist for the last four videos. If they haven't gotten it yet, I think you're doing something wrong. I mean, doing something more wrong than just the class in general. Um, the red, white, and blue flag. How, how many of you feel like you're American? Who doesn't feel like they're American? Why don't you feel like you're American? Well, at my theater camp, someone asked me why I got the part of Tinkerbell because I didn't look like Tinkerbell at all. And that person was blonde. That is very sad. <laughs> I cry every time. I mean, that's kind of weird. It's perfectly intuitive for a child to think that a blonde actress is better suited to portray a blonde character. In all likelihood, your blonde peer did not intend to be rude, but rather they misunderstood the purpose of the theater camp, which is not to faithfully recreate the Peter Pan story, but to emphasize acting skill amongst all of the children. That's not an unreasonable mistake for a child to make. An example of an unreasonable mistake for a child to make is answering the question, why don't you feel American, with someone thinks I don't accurately portray Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell isn't American, and portraying Tinkerbell is not an American act. How do you feel about being female, if you identify with female? I wish I could be a boy, so when I grow up to be a Father, I don't have to think about a zillion things, and mothers think about like 1,000 zillion things. So what are the few things that fathers have to think about? Mostly they rest. Resting, yeah. Why do the fathers need to rest? Because they go to work. Because they work to support the rest of the family. They have more to think about. And I don't expect the child to know this. It's okay that the child doesn't know this, they're a child. I do, however, expect the adult to know this, and to not reinforce false thoughts in the children. You know what I do when structural racism and misogyny get me down? Oh sweet Jesus, no, not a musical number. <laughs> I sing the blues. So when you get sad, you feel like culturally appropriating blacks. Come on! Let's sing together! I don't know karate, and no, I don't speak Japanese. Sing it, Asian girl blue! Well, you have been incorrectly thinking that I oppress minorities this entire series, so where's my musical number? Sure, we're both Asian, but it don't mean we're related, come on! You are more closely related to each other than you are to me. That's what it means to be a member of a race. And I like playing dress up, but I don't always want to be Mulan. Sing it, Asian Mulan is a goddamn war hero who saved all of China. She is far and away the best Disney princess. Don't assume I'm quiet. Heard my tantrums roar. This video project has itself been a giant tantrum by Christina Wong, so yes, I have heard your tantrums. You bring a greater dishonor to the family. Or a vase. Sing it, Asian girl blue. 
oriental is derived from the Latin word for east because Asia is to the east. It is no less accurate for me to call you oriental than it is for you to call me western. These simply refer to the cardinal direction with which our countries of origins are most associated with. Why is this a problem? If I'm objectifying you by calling you oriental, am I personifying a vase by calling it Asian? Does that make any sense? And don't call me exotic. I'm not a bird from far away. All right, I, I guess now is the time in the video where we finally broach this topic, but no one's going to be calling you exotic, or Asian, even, because you're black. This is awkward, moving on. Sing it, Asian Blues. I'm a person, not an object. I've got the Asian Ching chong to me. Gazuntite. I won't answer to your call. Sing it, Asian girl blue. Three fifths of people are Asian. <laughs> you are testing my ability to not make a three fifths joke. Don't hide behind some great wall. Sing it, Asian girl blue. Asians telling people not to build great walls. What is the world coming to? Ignorance is not acceptable. I'll remember that if we ever discuss economic principles, communist. I've got the Asian girl blues. I'm a short girl with It would only make sense for you to describe yourself as extraordinary if you thought there were people who weren't extraordinary. That's not very equality-minded of you. I check many boxes. My gender's up to me. Sing it, Asian girl blue. There are people like me who have never thought twice about their gender. And there are people whose gender identity has caused them legitimate strife because it does not match the sex they were born as. Someone with gender dysphoria would not frame their gender as being up to them, because they can't control their predisposition towards wanting to be the opposite sex. By implying that gender is something that can be chosen on a whim, I think you're doing a disservice to the people who actually suffer from gender dysphoria. That, or you are further bastardizing the term gender by removing it even further from sex than it already is, um, so in either case, fuck you. Respect me like I respect you. You don't respect me, adult writing this song and puppeteering this child. You've made it abundantly clear to me that you don't respect me based primarily on my race and my gender. I will extend to you the courtesy you did not extend to me by disrespecting you on the grounds of your ideas rather than aspects about yourself you can't control. Your ideas are a hate-filled virus that you have chosen to infect children with because they have yet to build an immunity to it. They can't recognize how patently false, hypocritical, and bigoted your ideas are. So it's important that you warp their concepts of truth and bigotry now in order to preempt all the complications that arise when they develop critical thinking skills. As horrifying and disgusting as this video series has been to respond to, I take some solace in the fact that you have solidly lost the argument, whether you realize it or not. Hopefully one day the kids will realize that too.